Welcome to Sad TV News. I am Alicia George. In our top stories, Dominica Coast Guard executes major drug bust. Water woes for yet another Caribbean country. 300 persons remain stranded in South Korea maritime incident. And in sports, New Zealand and Windies to face off in Test Cricket. Details of these will follow. The wheel of change is here at SAS. New and exciting rewards just for you. SAS customers, see the pay your bill and get the new Loyalty Plus plan for free. That's 26 channels absolutely free for a limited period. Yes, you heard me, free. And if you do pay your bill, you'll have a chance to win big with SAT TV. Up to $15,000 in prices are up for grabs. Seven inch tablets, Blackberry smartphones, food vouchers, and much, much more. Get, Get more from SAT TV, TV, the people's choice. SAT terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. The Coast Guard base located in Foncole was filled with activity as Coast Guard officers on the morning of Wednesday, April 16, 2014, made a major drug bust. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector John Carbon confirmed that two individuals are in police custody following the significant seizure of more than 500 pounds of cannabis. He stated an 18-foot open keel boat named Slick, powered by 85 and 75 horsepower Yamaha outboard motors, was intercepted by Coast Guard officers off the coast of Scots Head during a police operation. A Dominican who resides in the north and a Vincentian national who found on the boat at the time it was intercepted. They are expected to appear before a Rosso magistrate on Thursday, April 17th, where they will be charged. A special ceremony was held on Wednesday, April 16, 2014, to recognize the achievements of Cahil Charles and Minka John Baptist of the Dominica Grammar School in the 2013 Eastern Caribbean Currency Union ECCU, Business Innovation Contest. The students placed second in a contest which they said required a lot of preparation. A lot of time was invested and I think it's a long lasting experience because in the future if we want to establish a business of our own, then that experience would be of benefit to us. The contest, which formed part of the bank's public education calendar for Financial Information Month, held in October 2013, challenged students from across the ECCU to conceptualize innovative business ideas which they believe could improve the world around them by addressing a problem or need and submit the concept with a supporting business plan. Minka John Baptist was the Vice President of Human Resource for their business plan in the contest. So I had to do with salaries and wages, helping organizing that and attendance and mainly roles about that. As it helps you with what you would want to do in life and makes you think about the different possibilities you have open. Charles, who was the Vice President of Finance, was charged with the role of keeping track of the expenses and income of the business. The students who formed the business focusing on a facial cleansing mask said, it is doing well and indicated that their first batch of products sold out quickly. They were each presented with a check of $2,000 and a certificate of participation by Ms. Shoma John, resident representative of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Agency office in Dominica. So the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, we're also appealing to students to participate in our OECS essay competition. Information can be obtained from our ECCB agency office on the Food Floor Financial Center, or students can visit our website, eccb-centralbank.org. The grand prize is $2,500. So we urge students during the Easter season to do something creative where they can actually be rewarded by participating in the OECS essay competition. Deadline, 25th April. A training workshop on psychosocial support training on cancer conducted by the Dominica Cancer Society, took place today, April 16, 2014. The training encompasses community volunteers in the seven health districts for the Healthy Caribbean Collision and is funded by a grant from the Australian government under the Direct Aid Project. The project places heightened focus on the increase in the number of women who succumb to cervical cancer each year, a global problem that affects thousands of women around the world. At the opening ceremony to mark the event, 
Nurse Florestine Lewis, Senior Community Health Nurse in Region 1, said human papillomavirus, HPV, is the leading cause of cancer, contributing to nearly 75% of cancer-causing agents. Uh, over 2,210 have other female genital cancers because that HPV not only causes cervical cancer, but it can also cause cancer of the vulva and um, maybe of the genital tract. It also can cause cancer in men. So it's not just a female disease that we should be concerned about. We also have to be concerned about our men. Nurse Lewis recommends early detection as a preemptive measure, as well as forming support groups with persons who have already been affected. Executive Director of the Caribbean Foundation of Boston, Beulah Fagan Providence, also spoke in support of early detection and healthy living. I met a friend, her arm was swollen, I tell her, what's wrong with you? She says she's a cancer survivor and she has to go to Barbados. So I say, why is it we cannot have our own here? And I think we had a cancer survivor, a cancer organization here, but it wasn't doing anything. So I am very pleased to see that today we have a workshop where we can educate people about what it means and how important it is to be a survivor and also to help another person. The training is administered under the theme WIP Cervical Cancer. Willingness to act now, have a pap smear, inform yourself and others, and prevent cervical cancer. This workshop is the third in a series of four training sessions. The Dominica State College, DSC, is offering three new programs as it seeks to increase its portfolio. For the first time, a generic Bachelor of Science degree in nursing will be offered, teaching the science and principles of nursing. An associate's degree in mass communications is another new program, in addition to the introduction of courses in fine arts. According to a release from the college, these programs are the result of DSC's continuous response to the needs of the communities it serves. This recruitment drive will target the following communities. Thursday 24th April at Casa Bruce Secondary School. Tuesday 29th April at 4.30pm at the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School in St. Joseph. Thursday 1st May at Northeast Comprehensive School in Marigot. Tuesday 6th May at Pierre Charles Secondary School in Grand Bay. Thursday 8th May at Portsmouth Secondary School and on Tuesday 13th May at the Dominica State College Auditorium at Stock Farm Lower Campus. Another feature of this year's recruitment drive is the hosting of a recruitment fair on Friday 16th May on the grounds of the Stock Farm Campus from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The fair will include campus stores for potential students, presentations about specific programs, distribution of program brochures, and on-site application for the new academic year. Producers and suppliers of agricultural products, as well as buyers from the hospitality sector from across the OECS, recently gathered in St. Kitts and Nevis to discuss and examine preliminary findings of an agro-tourism demand study for the OECS. The project is critical to the long-term development of the relationship between agriculture and tourism. Because, in effect, these are the two most critical industries in the region, especially in the OACS sub-region. And I think that if we focus our energies and attention on deepening the relationship between these two industries, then the people of the, of the sub-region will, will, in fact, um, benefit significantly. There are indications that hoteliers are willing to work with farmers to buy local produce, and as such, there are clear opportunities for increased business between the sectors. The agro-tourism demand study will seek to determine through experimental data the products from agriculture that can be targeted for production and sale to the hospitality sector in the OECS. I think the demand study is, is, is important in helping us to get a better sense of what is what are the possibilities? Hoteliers don't necessarily like to, like to provide information because of the, it's time consuming and they have to manage a hotel. But I think what we have gotten today is a commitment on everybody's behalf to, to make the effort to fill out the surveys. This will give us a, a benchmark. The demand study also seeks to assess related factors affecting linkages, including quantity, quality, and timing of supply 
cost of production, as well as price and payment systems. The OECS member states of Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Lucia were represented at the meeting. Six primary schools have advanced to the finals of the National Math Power Contest, organized by the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development in collaboration with the National Bank of Dominica Limited. The semi-finals were held at the Newtown Primary School and at the St. Martins Primary School on Tuesday, April 15th. The successful schools at the St. Martins Secondary, 58 points, Newtown Primary, 56 points, Quali Hill Primary, 51 points, St. George Primary, 49 points, Rosa Primary, 47 points, and the Rosa Seventh-day Adventist Primary School, 44 points. The secondary schools will compete on Thursday, May 1st, 2014, while the finals for both primary and secondary schools will be held on Thursday, May 8th at 10 a.m. at the Arawak House of Culture. As telecommunications service providers seek to establish themselves as major industry players within the sector through mergers and acquisitions, there emerges the need to referee disputes. The government of Dominica has therefore invited International Telecommunications Union, ITU, to the island to conduct a workshop on dispute resolution and competition law in the telecommunications sector. The workshop, scheduled to take place from April 22nd to 24th, 2014, at the Fort Young Hotel, will be led by a team of international experts who have previously facilitated highly successful ITU training workshops in the Caribbean and in Africa. The focus of this workshop is to provide participants with a legal and regulatory framework for addressing dispute resolution and ensuring regulatory certainty in a competitive environment. The training will provide a legal framework within which to understand the many regulatory aspects of the sector and the ways of managing anticipated disputes in an era of competition dominated by mergers and acquisitions as companies seek to position themselves in the market. Plans are continuing for this year's Jazz and Creole event to be held at Cabrit in Portsmouth. The event, on Sunday, June 8, 2014, will see the inclusion of more Grammy Award-winning artists. This was according to Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority, Mr. Colin Piper, speaking during a press conference on Wednesday, April 16th. But we are pleased to announce another Grammy Award winner will be here uh, for Jazz on main stage June 8th and that is none other than Marlo Rosado and I'll just read a little from his bio from salsa to rock from merengue to hip-hop from bachacha to reggaeton producer pro composer pianist Marlo Rosado has had his musical hand in all of it a native of Puerto Rico he is a salsero at heart but has successfully written played and produced hits in a variety of musical styles for some of the most renowned artists in Latin music. Mr. Piper also announced that Digicel is the platinum sponsor of this year's event and stated the company has been on board for the past four years. Along with 8Note, um, we'll have back uh, Brief, uh, who is one, also one of our um, international uh, local bands. <laughs> That's kind of like a dichotomy. Um, in, in Brief as well, um, there are two musicians who actually are already international uh, stars in their own right. The keyboardist used to play with Itana um, in Jamaica and UC, who everybody knows, plays with many international artists across the planet. So we're, we're really upping the ante here. We're upping the standard and we really want to see everybody there to appreciate the, the good music. A week of events has also been planned leading up to the 5th annual Jazz and Creole. So we have the 4th of, that's the Wednesday with Evergreen Hotel doing pan and jazz soiree. On the 5th of June we have the Anchorage Hotel where we get that word, sound and power jazz and creole edition. On the 6th we go to the Fort Young Hotel for creole and jazz happy hour. And on the 7th of June, that's a day before the actual event, we go to the Riverstone Bar and Grill for the Riverside Jazz and Creole. So if you observe the jazz we are trying to 
spread it. It is happening island-wide. And we're inviting any of the other stakeholders who want to build on the jazz momentum before the MAC event to come on board. Of course, we are inviting everyone to be part of this excitement. Visit us on the social media. You can get us at Dominica Fest on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, hashtag Jazz and Creole. And come be a part of that excitement. Miss Williams is urging everyone to be a part of the fringe events, which are also important. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. <laughs>